Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Davis. I'm with the International Grooving and Grinding Association. And we're here this week in O'Fallon, Illinois, uh, for the 2023 Road Profile Users Group Conference. Now, we're just a few miles away from the new iCart testing facility um, built by Illinois DOT. Um, and we're going to be sitting down today with Brian Schleppi, former Ohio DOT right. and now private consultant. Yes. Um, and you have a pretty infamous reputation around here, okay. former <laughs> former president of the steering committee. Yes. And also the brains behind the smoothness protocol for bridge decks in Ohio. Certainly led the effort in the, in the development of that specification, IRI on structures. Yes. Awesome. So thank you for sitting down with us. Sure. My pleasure. And uh, we're really excited. So 30 seconds on the clock. Tell us a little bit about your experience, your new business venture, and what you're working on. Sure, I uh, spent 35 years at the Ohio DOT, started in the materials uh, materials lab in the cement and concrete section, worked my way up through uh, the Office of Technical Services, and spent the majority of my career in um, surface characteristics and vehicle interaction property. So now that I'm retired, uh, starting to dabble around, uh, hung up my own shingle, it's, uh, uh, BIHSC, that stands for Vehicle Interaction Highway Surface Characteristics. So um, I'm happy to do training in, in, in the, the area of sur surface characteristics, whether it's uh, uh, profile analysis, uh, profile software use, leveraging the technology for construction, leveraging the technology, how a state could use it or an agency could use it better or get more out of it, uh, friction, friction management, texture, texture research, those sorts of things. Awesome. So in your experience, you know, what would you say are the most important surface traits of a roadway and, and why? Well, certainly anytime a survey is done, there's three things that always come to the top. Safety first, right? So related to surface characteristics, do you have enough grip uh, so that you don't skid off the road? Plenty of wet grip uh, in the rain, those, those sorts of things, right? So safety is pri primary number one, but it's, it's at the top. But then ride quality, people want a smooth ride and they want a quiet, quiet ride, right? So mm -hmm. they don't want a bunch of noise and they don't want a bunch of bumps in the road. And certainly I think number three, I would say availability, right? Is the system available? Is it congestion free? Can I get to where I'm going reliably in a reasonable amount of time? So they want it accessible or available. So how important would you say, you know, ride quality is when it comes to the users, you know, vehicle life? fuel consumption, and then ultimately, you know, the sustainability of the entire highway system. Sure. So, so the typical, you know, John Q. Public traveling the road, uh, right ability or what they experience in terms of right quality is, is their idea of the condition of the road. Um, so certainly it's extremely important for user satisfaction, but it also impacts, you know, the roughness of the road impacts uh, cargo damage, what we pay for goods because people moving products around, the more they get damaged or the more they have to put into packaging so they don't get damaged when they get shipped, uh, those sorts of things. The smoother the road, uh, the less vehicle wear and tear, right? The mm -hmm. smoother the road, the longer it lasts. So, uh, and you know, it's good for the, good for the consumer, uh, the people traversing the road, and it's good for the agency because it'll last longer. So, you know, um, I, I like that point. It, it's basically, you know, we're kind of putting money back into our taxpayer's pocket when we keep a, a sure. smooth highway system. Sure. So research shows, shows that uh, smooth pavements stay smooth longer, which is effectively a mantra to, you know, smooth pavements have a longer service life. So we see a, a ton of funding hitting the streets with the bipartisan infrastructure law. And this, the goal of this program is a once in a lifetime investment into our highway system. So we're really thinking about long lasting pavements that are gonna stay smooth longer, last longer, all right. these things. So what do you think should be the minimum acceptable IRI on a, on a new pavement that, that DOTs would be accepting? That's, that's an interesting question, right? And I think it varies. And it's gonna vary state to state. Certainly there's gonna be some ranges. If I'm building a new alignment, uh, for an interstate highway, right, there's going to be a, a higher expectation for smoothness than, uh, and, and I should probably have a different smoothness criteria than, than maybe a, a rural two-lane road with a lower speed limit, right, or mm -hmm. different criteria for an urban road, right, stop-and-go situations, those sorts of things. It also depends on what's reasonable and achievable. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the capacity and the knowledge of the agency? 
to, to know what to ask for and what's the capacity and knowledge of the construction community, what are they able to build, right? What we learned when we started using IRI smoothness specifications that once we got the knowledge out, we, 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 we did our best to shorten the learning curve, but the more the agency learned, the more the contractors learned, we were able to get smoother and smoother pavements. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of start somewhere and, and then you can get further, right? You can, you can sure. get smoother. But what makes sense? What right. is reasonable and achievable? I think we need uh, a higher standard or a lower IRI on your interstates uh, to be reasonable and achievable. Uh, that, the same thing's not necessarily required for, uh, like I said, the two-lane road or the urban road. We need to think about what's really appropriate. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a, a number that you would comfortably throw at it in terms of IRI? So for freeways, expressways, open roadways, um, once you have the capacity there, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think a lot of smoothness specifications go down to 30 inches per mile on the positive pay adjustment. That's mm -hmm. reasonable and achievable. Uh, we're seeing uh, if, if that's your lower limit for the positive pay adjustment, you will consistently see contractors building in the mid to high 20s to low 30s consistently. And it's a quality ride. Yeah. How about for if, if I have an older pavement and I'm looking to do, you know, some, uh, you know, some pavement repairs, uh, maybe uh, talking concrete pavement, maybe some spall repairs, full depth repairs, and, and I'm looking to grind into a better ride quality. What do you think would be like the, the reasonable, acceptable IRI for a uh, production grind finish? Sure. Again, it kind of depends on where you're at and and what you have, what kind of distresses you have, is mm -hmm. it a good candidate for grinding, right? Mm -hmm. You know, is it is it sort of functional roughness where if we grind it, we're gonna have, we're gonna, ha we're, our pavement's structurally sound. So if we grind it, the, the grinding's gonna pay off. It's, the bang's gonna be worth the buck because it's gonna last a long time. Mm -hmm. we, can, we have a long expectation, right? Uh, there might be a lot of places where uh, we might need to do some partial depth or full depth repairs before we do that grinding or that smoothness improvement's not going to last. Sure. So what's the number? It kind of depends on where we're at, what the issue is. But, uh, you know, I, I think certainly, uh, you know, lower double-digit IRI in terms of inches per mile, um, you know, 50, 60, 40, yeah, you know, sort of depends on the situation. Yeah. And, and it depends on the roadway. <clears throat> so you're thinking for a pavement preservation grind would be, you know, 50, 60? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking, uh, if we're out on the interstate, and yeah. we've got solid pavement uh, that's sound. Or we've 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 done our structural repairs, and we go out and blanket grind it. Yeah, I think I think fifty sixty uh, might be appropriate in some situations. It, it kind of depends on what what your issues are, how much if it's jointed concrete pavement, how much curl and work you have, mm -hmm. uh, what's reasonable and achievable. But sure, but yeah, it, it might be seventy, it might be sixty, it might be fifty, you might get into the forties. Yeah, that reasonable and achievable kind of depends. On I think fifty and sixty is is an aggressive bar. But if we're shooting for the stars, hopefully we'll land on the moon. Well, yeah. it, it also depends on what you start with, too. Right. Right. If we're talking about something that's in the, you know, 80s or 90s or or at that level, then I think 40s and 50s are definitely achievable. Once you have. Awesome. So, um, in your opinion, you know, what's uh, the most exciting prospect for highway smoothness and surface textures? Uh, it makes sense, and it's very reasonable to apply IRI smoothness specifications on the highway, not just the pavement. So I'm speaking about structures really makes a lot of sense. Right. There. Right. And then, and that's kind of how you applied it in Ohio. Sure. Was, you sure know, that the, was, the bridge is part of the highway. System. That's right. Let's think about it holistically. When the, when the people drive down the road, uh, they remember the bumps. They don't remember how smooth things are. Typically they kind of take that for granted, but they certainly remember the bumps and quite frequently that bump is at the end of the bridge, right? Yeah. So if we can smooth that out, uh, success is when you ride over a bridge and don't, you don't know you did. Yeah, uh, certainly. So, awesome. Um, but you ask, you also ask about other things, and uh, texture is very exciting. Uh, I've said for quite a while. I think, as an industry, we we think we know more about what's going on between the tire and the pavement than we really do, uh, particularly with respect to friction. Uh, we we don't fully understand the role that micro and macro texture is playing and how it inter interacts with the tire to to give us friction and and grip traction or skid resistance, however you want to put it. Sure. But there's some exciting things happening. We we did a lot of testing when we would have wet crashes at locations and investigate them uh, based on micro texture and macro texture. So if you have a surface 
Um, it has good micro texture, but you don't have enough macro texture to help evacuate water. So, yeah. Then you can have a serious grip or friction issue when it's wet. And we encounter some situations like that. Uh, diamond grooving, longitudinally diamond grooving, a surface can, can solve a lot of problems or fix a lot of issues in those areas, reduce your, reduce your wet crashes. It works not only on concrete, it works on asphalt really well too. Uh, we've done that in several locations and, and it's not a short term fix. It's a long fix and we don't typically have any issues with the accelerating distress of that asphalt from the diamond group. Tell the audience how to contact you if they need some of your help. All right. Uh, I've just got a website up going, um, www.vihsc.com, or you can e email me at brian at vihsc.com. So, thank awesome. You. Thanks it. for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks. Yep.